It's about the process, not the not the product. It still helps when the product is damn good. Especially when the product is that good. Bruins fans, it is time to hug it out. Cause that is a four to one victory over the Carolina Hurricanes. Welcome back down into the den, everybody. Man, the first time that the Bruins have won in regulation against the against the Carolina Hurricanes in eight games. That's a little that's a little bit concerning. That's a little bit concerning. I do not like having that bad of a track record against the team, especially in a post-COVID world. World of uh, yeah, that that tracks all the way back to the that that tracks all the way back to the first uh, to the first season of Into the Den. And and cuz we played the cuz we played the and the Canes earlier this uh, earlier this year. And how did that go? Uh, give me one second, actually. Uh, frick, if I can find it. Sorry, one second. Ah, that's right. We lost that one. And January 24th, 3-2. to two. Oh. Now, last year, we had... Last year, we went 2... Uh, we went 2-1 and one against them, and both those ones were in overtime. And the only, the reason why I know oh, that last year we uh, we won two games again uh, we uh, delivered onto the uh, onto the ha uh, onto the Canes the only two overtime losses that they've uh, suffered in the last uh, eight uh, with us is because the uh, is because it was the first season I did into the Den 2021 2022 we lost all three games of them by a combined score of 16 to 1 including a 7 to 1 blowout loss during Tukarask's return on the number retirement for uh, on the num number retirement night for Willie O'Ree. That was a frustrating one. It ended up being one in which I just you know, touted it why uh, screamed for about f 5 minutes and that ended up being in the most viewed uh, the most viewed video on, my, video on my channel for a little bit. So going into this game, a little bit fr a little bit uh, concerned. Uh, team that we uh, team that we've uh, been historically not great against, and on uh, and on top of that, we're on the road. And PNC uh, PNC Arena is legitimately one of the most intimidating arenas in in the entire league. The way uh, the way uh, the way that Canes fans are so rabid about their team, it feels like they are directly on top of you. And on top of that, we are without Justin Brajo. Oh, after Luke Shen, uh, after Luke Shen, and uh, uh, checked him in the uh, in the Nashville game, um, Rajo looks like he will be out week to week, which is concerning, very concerning, for a reason that we will get into later on. So puck drops and really early on, it's looking like a go one. It's looking like a go one. You want to know why? Because it's April 4th. And you know what April 4th is? It's National Rat Day. You thought I was joking? Take a look at this. April 4th, National Rat Day. And you know what that means. Marshall has his 400th goal! And it could not be more of a Marshan goal. A really bad overcommittal play, and honestly uncharacteristic of him, from Jacob Slavin, and leaves Morgan Geeky with the puck just wide open. Just wide open. But you know who's wide open down the ice? Brad Marshand. And, 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 and Geeky threads this puck between, between two defensemen. And Mar it's just Marshand. And Freddie Anderson, and the former Leafs goalie, the guy who backstopped the Leafs into Game Seven in 2018 and 2019. Marshan and him have a little bit of history, and you know what? Marshan still has his number, and that number is 400, baby!
Martian tries Martian tries to is to shove this puck through uh, through the five hole. Oh, Anderson has it. Anderson almost has it, but uh, but the way Marchand falls uh, falls afterwards, uh, it's the puck ricochets off his uh, off his shin pads, uh, off Marchand's shin pads, and trickles through uh, and trickles through the uh, trickles through the goal uh, to the post. The post being the post being his legs, Thanks. Anderson's legs. And that is the one nothing goal to start this game. We don't even know who the linesmen are because for some reason, because for some reason at the start of the game, the um, the uh, the graphic that uh, the graphic in the upper left hand corner that shows uh, that shows uh, the team uh, the team scores and shots on goal and everything from Nesson, it just wasn't showing up for the first uh, for the first minute. I really hope that I wasn't the only person who saw that. Just over five minutes later. A fantastic, a fantastic play from the uh, from uh, from the Pasternak line, and which, by the way, the lines were kind of were kind of messed up uh, this game. Um, and by kind of messed up, I mean Geeky was on uh, Geeky was on the uh, Marshan's line, and and DeBrusque was on uh, and DeBrusque was on the third line, and 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 JVR ended up filling in on the fourth. It was a it was a little bit it was a little bit weird. I I kind of liked it. I th I think that it I think that it definitely had its benefits, but I also think that uh, that if Brajo gets gets healthy, you got to go back to the you kind of got to go back to the to the original lines. But I'm also not opposed to trying this line in future games. Like uh, I'm not opposed to trying this lineup up in future games. Especially because I really think that if JVR is is going to stay on this team, he needs to be on the fourth line. He needs to be on the fourth line. This, t and he is way too slow. Oh, at this current point to, and to be anywhere but the fourth. But I'm I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Of oh, the, of oh, a great shift from the uh, from the Heinen Zaka pasta line, uh, and Zaka uh, pulls the puck over the. Uh, uh, of the uh, of the blue line, and and to gain the line, and 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 sends it to Pasta, uh, who forces uh, who forces one of the worst overcommittals I think I've ever seen Brent Burns Burns take in his entire career, and you know that thing that Evgeny Kuznetsov uh, does every single time that he's in the shootout where uh, where he just slows down and. He Pasternak basically does that right to uh, right to Frederick Anderson's face, uh, right to Frederick Anderson's face. Is is he uh, he is playing with his uh, his food? He's uh, he's uh, he's cooking up something, and what's he cooking up? He's cooking up noodles on the top shelf. Two nothing Bruins. Two nothing Bruins. Less than ten minutes in, and by this point, you could hear a pin drop. In PNC, you could hear you could hear rats squeaking and and skittering all over the place, cause they cause they ain't celebrating shit there. Just about th just about three minutes later, another great shift from the uh, from this line. I mean, I mean, and honestly, I I really think that this is our best line right now. Oh, I think Pasta, Zaka, and Heinen have all found their groove you know, together, and as a result. Uh, and uh, and pasta uh, and they know it. They know it. Pasta. I feel like a couple months ago would not be making this pass to as to Heinen, and and but he uh, but he make uh, but he has just enough real estate to make uh, to make a pass and it's across the slot to Heinen, and and Heinen has his and Heinen has his stick just uh, just at the right. A place to is to is to just send it to just send it arcing over uh, over Freddie Anderson and that is three nothing in the first period and and I think oh man this is this is gonna be a great game this is gonna be a great game for the Bruins how are we even gonna fight out of it Johnny Beecher go, uh, Johnny Johnny Beecher goes tit for tat with Jack Drury and he, both of them end up uh, end up in the box for fighting makes sense but and, but man, 
it felt good to see Beecher drop the gloves. It felt really damn, it felt so damn good to see Beecher drop the gloves. Uh, especially because his style of play sort of, uh, sort of calls for it. He kind of is a guy who you want to and see drop the gloves. I kind of, I kind of think of him as a little bit of a Sean Thornton, mm. except a little bit more, except a little bit better with the puck than Sean Thornton. Mm. No, nope. uh, no disrespect to Thornton, but Be uh, but Beecher does have a, f uh, but uh, but I think Beecher might have a few uh, a few better offensive uh, capabilities than Thornton. I might be wrong. It's been a while since, Th since Sean Thornton played. But then we get to the second period. We get to the second period, and uh, and you can maybe chalk this up to Bruins' second period uh, issues, but this is where the wheels started to come off a little bit. The Bruins just the Bruins were gifted, were gift wrapped uh, three consecutive penalties. It is it is Aho tripping McAvoy, and then Andrei Svechnikov going for a double minor uh, for high sticking uh, McAvoy. And the Bruins do nothing with them. The Bruins do nothing on either, on any of these three power plays, Anyways, which puts us at, if I'm not mistaken, a cumulative one for uh, uh, one for nineteen at the end of this game, um, over our last seven games, and uh, and now uh, the uh, and now the Hurricanes have uh, have killed fifteen straight penalties. Not great. Not great. And and what really sucks is after this, the Bruins just start taking penalties. And it's not just it's not just, uh, just random Bruins. And think uh, we end up with two of our best penalty killers, Brandon Carlo and Hampus Lindholm, in the box in less than with less than ten seconds. And, and in between each other. So now we have to. So now we are over a minute and a half on, uh, of a five on three with two of our best penalty killers in the box. Thanks. And for what it's worth, it does. It does take. It takes Inks Carolina until uh, until like thirty seconds left in uh, in Lindholm's penalty. <laughs> It ta it takes him a while to uh, to get the uh it, it takes him a, a while to get uh, to the uh it, it takes him a while to get to uh, it takes it takes, it takes Carolina a while to uh, to actually break break that ice. Yes, Swayman played out of his mind this game. I I just want to say this this was the best game in that we've seen that we've seen from Swayman in a while. I'm still not a hundred percent on him for and for starting in the playoffs. I know he's been in fantastic all season, but the way he's been playing in the past few in the past few weeks, definitely definitely lowers my confidence a little bit. And and Omar has absolutely stepped up. I think honestly, I think honestly, you roll at this point. I'm sorry, you got to roll Omar in the you got to roll Omar in the in the playoffs. Maybe, maybe you try out a tandem. I would, I would very much be in favor of trying out a tandem. Um, um, but I don't think that you should. Uh, but uh, if you need to pick one, Allmark has the momentum, and momentum is a very, very powerful drug in this game. Um, um, but in any case, uh, but in any case, is is it is Jake Gensel who ends up with the uh, who ends up with the goal. Well. Well, and just for the entire second period, the Bruins cannot uh, cannot really ever uh, break through. It look uh, they are stuck in their own zone. They cannot really uh, they cannot uh, move the puck in transition. They are uh, they're sort of they cannot get out of their own way. And I uh, and I had faith in them. I was like, okay, they're uh, okay. We've built up enough of a lead. Need, need, and while I don't like that we're, uh, I don't like that we're uh, allowing them to, um, to think that they're getting back into this, is, I, is we have a decent enough cushion right now. Oh, 
and we're playing at a level right now to where we can uh, to where we are able to manage this yes. it's not really about preventing everything wrong from happening it is uh, it is about managing every single little uh, every single leak in your uh, it is about managing every single leak in your hull uh, uh, before it becomes an unmitigated disaster. Uh, uh. Yes, leaks are going to happen. You are not going to you are not going to have an uh, you are not going to have an insane game every single uh, game. You are not going to have an eighteen point uh, you are not going to have an eighteen game point streak like uh, like Nashville just went on. And every single season, you are not going to go 65, 12, and five every single season. Mm. Mm. You are not going to mm, to mm, to finish every single postseason with a, a postseason record of sixteen and zero. It's just not going to happen. Mm. Mm. And so, uh, and so, uh, and so, uh, the only goal that uh, that Carolina scoring being on a th- being on a five on three, I'm okay with. I am okay with. And sometimes you just need to be okay with uh, uh, with bad shit happening because sometimes, uh, sometimes there is a leak. Sometimes you have rats skittering around your uh, skittering around around your apartment. And who boy did and who boy did Carolina have rats scattering around their apartment in this game? And, and because ultimately, even though even though there were a couple leaks, even though there were a couple leaks, that uh, honestly that uh, that uh, Waterspoon Peak pair might have might have had their first game that I was a little bit questionable about. I did not really like Peak's game tonight. I think that he. Uh, uh, there were parts of it that were good. There were parts of it that I uh, think were uh, where uh, he overcommitted way too hard uh, and put the Bruins in a bad uh, situation. You know what? It's another leak. It's another leak. It's another leak. But you know what? We're still we're still going to be a tight ship. We end up with uh, uh, we end up with a pretty low to the ground. Uh, we end up with a pretty low to the ground on um, um, third period. Neither team really, uh, neither team can really put uh, put anything away. Uh, the Bruins are not able to get anything in past as Freddie Anderson anymore. Uh, the pa- uh, the Hurricanes cannot get anything past Jeremy Swayman. Like I said, this is the best game that Swayman's had all. Uh, this is the best game that Swayman's had in a while. Oh, oh, he was stopping everything, whether it's from. Uh, whether it's from um, Gensel or Sebastian Ajo or Andrei Svechnikov, uh, he was unstoppable for the most part. Right. And the only time, to- and the only time he was beat, he- it was a little bit questionable. It was a little bit questionable. Questionable. I was talking with people in the short shift in the short shift Discord right, about it because it kind of looked like that. It kind of looked like there was some contact between in Stefan Nason and and. Uh, and Swayman in there, and honestly, I'm really happy that uh, Monty didn't challenge it. Uh, not only did we have, uh, not only did we have two goal, uh, two insurance goals on them, uh, on them, but it, uh, but it would have been a, a challenge on a, uh, on a call that was iffy to begin with, uh, because it did kind of look like Peak was pushing, uh, was pushing Nason into, uh, into Swayman, and. And, and who uh, and even if and even if, uh, if Peak wasn't pushing Nason into Swayman, there was uh, there was a decent amount of time between in that contact and Swayman uh, and the goal being scored, uh, and as uh, and and honestly, what would have uh, been the what would have uh, been the outcome if uh, if it does if it gets called back? Okay, the uh, okay the. Uh, the hurricanes are still on a uh, this the hurricanes are still on a five on three uh, uh, and the uh, and the face off is likely still in your own zone um, and your uh, and your guys are kind of tired uh, 
if it doesn't get called back, congratulations, you're now on another five, you're now, you're still on a five on three because you've just tacked on another penalty for delay of game and for failing a challenge. So very happy that Monty did not, uh, did not uh, call for that review. Oh. So, oh. But in terms of, but in terms of, of the Bruins, but in terms of the third period, like I said, not really anything happening. A little bit of pushing and shoving. I know. I think it was Peek and Martinook that got into into a little bit of a that got into a little bit of a jawing match after around the around the twelve minute mark. But eventually, but eventually, the Hurricanes and are like, all right, we got to speed this up. We're down. We're down to uh, with like three minutes left in the game, and we gotta pull. Uh, we gotta pull Freddy, and uh, and what happens later? Hampus Lindholm from the top rope. Basically, basically from the top rope. Oh, by the top rope, I mean, uh, I mean from basically his own red line. I mean, I mean, just flips this shit all the way over everybody. And it just lands right in the net. It, it, it just finds its way right into the net. The best part, the best part about this, honestly, wasn't just the fact that it wasn't just the fact that uh, that we had that from uh, from Lindholm. It was also the fact that uh, that Swayman very much wanted one. He wanted a he wanted a shot, but he uh, but there was just one problem. It was just one problem. The the puck was not really cooperating on his stick, and and he had to give it up. But still, fantastic. But still, great great game. Were there a lot of things that I liked? Yes. Were there some things that I didn't like? Yes. There's gonna be that in every single game. Suck it up. But overall, well, in this in this current in, in at this current point in the, in the season where we are. We're focusing more on the process than the product. Trust the process. Trust the process. And that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys on Saturday, probably back in my, probably back in my, probably back in my house, uh, on a shitty potato laptop. Take care, everybody.